Hello, welcome back. So last year I had a bucket or a container garden in the same area that I'm making the combination hydroponic and uh, raised bed uh, garden this year. I didn't like the container gardening uh, that much. It was kind of a pain and uh, it didn't seem like I got the results that I was hoping for. And I've had pretty good luck in the past doing some hydroponic indoors, uh, so I thought, uh, why not try this uh, outdoor on a little bit larger scale? And I had some some uh, some things I had to think about because I didn't want to do a greenhouse, a little too expensive, and I wanted to to try it out first. And so I had to figure out uh, what kind of uh, hydroponic setup I needed to use to grow tomatoes, peppers, and uh, this year a couple of eggplants. And I, uh, mid-January, yeah, about January or so, I uh, started doing some research on the net and uh, did a Google search for outdoor hydroponic tomatoes. Didn't really find anybody who was doing true outdoor uh, hydroponics as far as uh, no greenhouse or no structure over uh, overhead to protect from the rain and uh, the wind and that sort of thing. So, uh, but I did find uh, MHP Gardener and uh, his channel on YouTube and uh, wow this guy is fantastic. Uh, a wealth of knowledge and really enjoys sharing it and uh, has a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I got a lot of ideas from him. Uh, he made some Dutch buckets, Beto buckets or Dutch bucket uh, hydroponic systems uh, from some containers that he got. I'm not really sure where he got them actually, but they, I think they were previously used as uh, uh, some sort of food storage for uh, a restaurant or something like that. Well, I don't have access to anything like that. Now, I should have checked uh, Craigslist uh, before I went and bought the actual uh, Dutch buckets, which was a, a bit of a, a hassle to try to find those in the first place. I tried my local hydroponic store, uh, several different local hydroponic stores, and apparently not a real popular way uh, of growing hydroponically in this area. And no one carried them. But in my search for that, I found uh, some commercial suppliers and saw some pictures of some of the ways they were doing it. So I kind of took uh, the way MHP Gardener, uh, Bobby, the way he was doing it, and combined that with some of the commercials uh, setups and found uh, the way that I'm going to do it this year uh, myself. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of construction in the garden, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that later. But uh, and, I, and just today, as a matter of fact, I got the first row of uh, posts set, so that's half the battle right there. Uh, I'm going to show you some diagrams, some some of the thought processes that went through that I went through when I was deciding how to set this up. And I still don't know if it's going to work properly. Uh, and I've, uh, you know, there's several different uh, gardeners that I've been watching on YouTube. Um, I will put them here because all I can think of is MHP Gardener because he is such a great resource. Uh, there's a guy up in Canada that is really, really fun to watch. He has a great time uh, doing his, uh, he's got a greenhouse, uh, outdoor greenhouse that he's doing some uh, hydroponic stuff. There's lots of different layouts and different uh, ideas that he's trying. And, uh, and uh, it just has a great time doing it too. So uh, I'll put a link here for that guy. Uh, and I can't believe I forgot his name. I should have written it down. Uh, and there's a uh, MI Am Am I Gardener, I think it is, uh, who's here, here in Michigan. And I've taken some ideas from him and uh, uh, for my uh, soil garden, my raised bed garden that I'm going to be doing. And uh, he's, he's a good resource because he's in the same. Uh, same climate that I am, you know, same state, same sort of conditions that he has to deal with. Here's some of the different uh, uh, layouts that I've done, uh, so far anyway. <laughs> uh, this has changed significantly uh, from when I first started it. There are some things that I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do yet. I don't know how I'm going to deal with heavy rain and wind storms. 
Uh, I know that chances are some of that rainwater is going to get into my buckets and, and start being a part of my circulation system, which is going to change my pH and my nutrient concentration. So uh, I'm thinking about ways that I can counteract that, maybe some sort of cover over each bucket. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, the wind, I, I envision uh, a huge windstorm and my tomato plants just dangling by the, uh, the twine <laughs> uh, in the wind. Uh, so I gotta figure out a way to make sure that doesn't happen. But uh, all challenges that I'm sure uh, can be overcome and uh, that's part of the fun of doing it, is figuring out how to, how to make things happen. All right, so the garden's going to be 20 foot by 20 foot. There will be a 3 foot rabbit fence around the perimeter. Also have a 2 foot buffer zone around the, uh, the garden, so I have room to get around and maneuver in there. Uh, there will be 3 rows of 6 uh, for tomatoes, 1 row of 10 for green peppers, cayenne peppers, and eggplant. Plus, I'll have the two 4x6 raised beds that I'll be using to do some soil gardening in there as well. Now, the inch and a half PVC is the return for the nutrient solution. It sends it back to the reservoir. Now, normally in a regular setup, you would just have a single pipe down the middle. You turn your buckets around 100, 180 degrees and have your uh, return all in one pipe for each of the two rows. But because I have those 4x4 supports in there, I don't have that luxury. I've got to have the two separate uh, return lines. On top of uh, the 4x4s, I'll have two 2x4s, one on each side, that will have, for each bucket, it will have two spools of twine that'll hang down, and I'll attach the tomatoes to that with some vine clamps, and that's what will support the tomato plants through the process. The nutrient solution reservoir will be a 27 gallon tote that will be buried as deep as I can possibly get it, hopefully to keep the solution a little bit cooler. I haven't determined yet uh, what kind of pump I'm going to use to get the water or the nutrient solution up there. It's going to travel over that half inch PVC or half inch uh, tubing. The, the two shutoff valves are there so I can drain the reservoir every couple of weeks and start fresh again. The half inch tubing will feed emitters all the way down the line of the end of the buckets, sort of like this. So the Dutch buckets are going to use drip irrigation. The half inch line back there feeds these small feeder tubes that attach to emitters. These little guys here. That send the nutrient solution right down into, ooh, a bee, right down into the uh, perlite. The reservoir solution will also have a float valve in it. Uh, as the water is taken up and the nutrient solution is taken up by the plants, that will allow water to refill into the reservoir. And then I just need to keep track of the pH and the uh, concentration of the nutrient solution and not have to worry about the pump drying out, uh, or the reservoir drying out and ruining my pump. The uh, float valve is going to be fed by the 255 gallon drums uh, and the water filter is going to hopefully fill up one drum while the other one is, is feeding the, uh, the reservoir. Whether I'll be able to make enough purified water for a 55 gallon drum while the other one is being depleted, that's yet to be seen, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Then each of the 255 gallon drums will have a shutoff valve so I can just shut each one off individually. Uh, I'll take that third one out of the, uh, the drawing and out of the mix because uh, it's really redundant and I don't need it there. So that's kind of how uh, this is all going to come together. Um, lots of different things to consider and uh, hopefully I've covered all my bases or as many as I can at this point. And uh, yeah, well, we hope to see you next week or whenever I get a chance to do another update on, the, on uh, how things are going inside. And hopefully next weekend I'll be able to move these, uh, these babies outside and uh, get them going. See ya.